Welcome to another edition of Interruptions. I'm your host, Oda Smith. Today, I got a treat for everyone. I got some beautiful and special people uh, on the podcast today. I have legendary producer, singer, extraordinary man of God, Paul Anthony from the group Full Force and also from House Party. Uh, he's still staff. <laughs> also, I also have a one had the pleasure to meet this wonderful lady, uh, Jeanette Aguilar. Uh, she has a beautiful story, a beautiful testimony. She's an author. She also has done podcasts and radio. And I have her on the show, another woman of God. I also have my friend, Pastor Timothy Fryer. We've been knowing each other I mean, uh, for years. I, I don't even know how long it's been. We're just going to say for years we've been knowing Hello, each other. He, he's, a, he's a great man of God here in the city of Atlanta from Durham, North Carolina, a fellow yes, Duke, Duke fan like myself. Yes. I, I got to put that out there. All I the appreciate way. you guys uh, coming on the show and blessing me with your presence. Uh, I'm so excited. Um, Paul, I want to start with you. Uh, if you could just uh, tell us when you heard the news at that point in time and, and just how did you overcome hearing those words when someone says, you know, you have cancer, you know, I always tell people, I know how to plan for tomorrow, but I never had to fight for it. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, it was, it was quite surprising because um, <clears throat> those, those that know my history, I'm largely responsible for ushering in uh, fitness and bodybuilding and training in the R&B and hip hop world back in this 84, 85, I've put it out there. And uh, I, over, the, over the time I've inspired literally millions in nutrition and health and fitness, starting from Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Mike Tyson, Buster Rhymes, on and on and on and on. So um, to know that when I was stricken with the first, my first of three cancers, which was, uh, you know, um, Mantle lymphoma, which is non-Hodgkin's. I mean, when you look it up, you see the words incurable, and you see the words fatal. Um, so when I was diagnosed with it, and um, the doctor said you have it, and I looked at, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was, oh, you know, and I said out loud like that. And then um, about anywhere from twenty-five seconds to thirty seconds after that. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not changing nothing. And what I meant was my constitution, my internal fortitude and what I represent. And I started going to work within myself right then and there, organically, energetically, and eventually spiritually, you know, because um, I feel that we all have tools within, you know? So, um, you know, it's a long, long story, but I just started going to work right away. The first person I went to see before I went to the European doctors and all that, I went to a spiritual advisor and she said, just based on the way you are and your whole outlook, you're going to be fine, you know, but he's going to put you through some things. So when she said that, I started manipulating the energy to myself. I said, okay. I said, okay, G, I see what you're doing. I got it. You, you want me to step into my next season really soon, but you want my words of life and death to be true. So you want me to put through, the, you want me to put, I got it. Okay, got it. Okay. Mm. And then I start saying, let's dance because I know God's at the turntables. Let's go. And I just approached it that way all the time. And then when my other two cancers came and they came a lot more aggressively, um, uh, especially the uh, uh, acute myeloid leukemia, and that's when things was life or death. And that's when my doctor said, you know, that she said, right now, Paul, you're fighting for your life. And I said to him, I said, well, I said, Doc, if you look closely, you're not looking close enough. If you look closely, I'm just laughing now because when I said I wasn't laughing, I said, right. if you look closely, you see my crown of glory. I'm special. I'm different. Now, let's start this over. I said, because he got things for me to do. And I said to him just like that. And I meant that, you know, but throughout the whole dance, it was, it was, um, you know, I, I uh, respected it, but I didn't own it. And I always knew that when he brought me through and when I would be uh, on point to do such interviews as this one. Mm -hmm. I knew he wanted me to just come through and, you know, there's just the reinforcement of my family and, and certain things that you, you can do beforehand. You know, I, you know, I've, I've pretty much uh, did a lot of things differently, you know, in the hospital that uh, they're still talking about to this day. 
you bless me. Uh, I remember when we when we first interviewed and you you were talking about and correct me if I'm wrong, but you you were talking about like something with your immune system, like they had to like break you all the all the way down. Uh, so, well, yeah. So yeah, yeah. What happened is, um, uh, depending on what stage or what level you're at, uh, the first thing they did is test my two brothers, and they saw that they found out that my brother Gola Yulu was a top ten for ten during a match. So we know we had that in the back. But when cancer came, and my my first bone marrow transplant was an autologous transplant. Basically, I was still, even although I was in the third going the fourth stage, I was still at a place where they could use my own because. I was in great physical shape. So they was able to use my own, but they knew it may come back within four or five years. The mindset was, let's do this now. So this way, either we'll find a cure or the success rate of a bone marrow transplant where my brother Lou will go higher. At the time, okay. it was 80%. By the time it came back, it was at 92%. And then his bone marrow transplant uh, was an allogeneic, you know, using a donor. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, a uh, it was a rough dance. No question. I mean, it was years and years of in and out and the whole nine, you know, I knew when I got my first chemo, I'm like, okay, cool. So let me see. I got the chemo on Monday. That means I go to gym on Tuesday. That means because Wednesday <laughs> I got to be still. So I had my regimen down, you know, Wow. And then when I had to be in the, when I had to be in there, um, I remember this is before they started creating a port. So I had to have my cap in my chest. And um, it's so funny because, you know, you have to wear a white, a yellow gown, mm -hmm. you have to wear a mask and the gloves, you know, yellow gown tied and backwards. Man, I put that bad boy around my neck like Superman and I had it <laughs> like this. And I put my, my headband that I wore on stage all these years. I put my gym gloves and I'm bopping down the hallway with my girlfriend, Ivy, Ivy Paul. That was my baby. She was always by my side. I said, hey, doc, this is my girl, Ivy. We get out, get out of the way. And I'm just rocking down the hallway like this because I'm not trying to feel the hospital. I want the hospital to feel me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, that was my whole thing. So, um, yeah, yeah, they had to wipe out my entire immune. Um, after they gave me treatment for leukemia, then they had to give me a second triple dose twice a day, 14 days in a row, um, chemo cocktail to wipe out my entire immune system at the molecular level to make room for my brother lose. So there's a, there's a lot go to it. And I'm, I'm sure we all have our own journeys, our paths, but um, yeah, mine was interesting. And God bless my beloved sister, Kathy Hughes. She said, Paul, what are we gonna do? I said, let's bring the cameras in. I said, let's bring them in here. I said, because I've always wanted to live forever. That's always been my goal, living since I was 21. What I do, what I put down. So I said, Kathy, on the first one, just in case we don't know what's happening, Let's bring the cameras in here and document this so I can live forever through this interview, you know? So, um, yeah, that, that episode of Unsung broke records that year. So, you know, I'm blessed. Yeah. You blessed, man. I, I just wanted to, because I wanted to capture that because a lot of people don't know what you just said as far as the stripping the immune system down. And yeah. then you had to build you back up and you here with us today to share an amazing yeah. story. And now we, he came in, friend, uh, uh elder states actor i love this man so much i gotta I give him his more. flowers mr ernest <laughs> thomas how you doing sir <laughs> i'm i'm doing great blessed super blessed super blessed brother good to see your smiling face the light <laughs> of god upon your face and my brother paul anthony ernest uh, hold on last time we were together don't you owe me thirty dollars <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, Ernest, what's happening? <laughs> what's happening? I'll tell you, Paul Anthony and Bo Megan Lou uh -huh. are just angels sent from heaven, brother. <laughs> I'm sure you know that, Otis. Oh, yeah. Uh, they are just angels sent from heaven. That's and they gave me such a beautiful tribute. Mm -hmm. I was there to honor them. I was just happy there to honor them at this event for all mm -hmm. their legacy and all the big hits and all that. And uh, and then they turn around like, they, I mean, big surprise. They got this video together, clips I never saw before. Humor, I mean, it was hilarious. I mean, it could be like that funniest animal show, like they, they comment on it, like yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Lou had all the kind, he was narrating it. It was so beautiful, but before yeah. that, <laughs> Lou was always he was he was journaling 
and documenting every step. He loves his brother so, so much, man. And he was always saying, I'm going to pray for my brother. We're praying. This is happening. This is going on now. I'm so happy I can give him the stem cells. And all. it was just so hearing your testimony, I, I have nothing to say. Oh, no, no, I come on. <laughs> I don't have a testimony. Come on. I have no testimony. Well, I got you. As you can see, as you can see, I have your, I have your sister here, uh, yes. Jeanette. Uh, where, where is she? Where is I'm she right at? here, Ernest. Oh, Maybe I'm on screen she for was, you. She was your surprise. Yeah, I wasn't going to tell you. <laughs> oh, I said, I know he ain't talking about the Jeanette. I, <laughs> now, you talking about someone that I love from the heart to heart, every cell in my body, that lady right there, that woman of God, that friend, well, you know, right? You know. Oh, yeah, yeah, you. yeah. You I, hadn't even, I hadn't even put her, I hadn't even, we just, I just interviewed her last week. I hadn't even put it out there. And uh, oh, and then we man. have my brother, uh, Pastor Tim Fryer. Uh, he's, oh. he's got, he's got a, a wonderful story. So I wanted to bring all you guys yes. because you guys have such, um, I admire the different things that you guys have went through and what God yes. has, has uh, brought you uh, through. Um, yes, yes. Uh, Jeanette, yes. If, uh, if you could give us, I mean, you you got such a great story. You, you can pick any of your stories. If you yeah. could, she got a story. She got, I'm going I'm to hush up. I'm going to hush up right now, brother. She's going to shut not, it down. She's worried. about to I'm shut it worried. down. She's going to shut it down. No, no, no. I'm telling you, I am honored. I'm privileged to be in the midst of greatness here. Paul Anthony, your uh, testimony is tremendous. It yes. was a blessing to yes. hear that. Thank Ernest, you. I already know what Raj to Riches, your book is all about. I've read it. And Pastor Timothy, I look forward to hearing yours. Me Otis, too. thank you for having me back. Thank you so much for having me back. I'm, right. I'm privileged to be here. And um, I honor God for everything he's brought me through. And like you said, I've got a multitude of testimonies. And, um, you know, most of them I brought on myself from making poor decisions. Mm. Um, and, and then I reverted to the reasons for my poor decisions was because of the foundation. You know, I think it's really important to train up a child in the way he should go. So when he's old, he will not depart. Well, if we weren't fortunate or privileged enough to be trained up in the way we should go, we often make a lot of mistakes that maybe could be avoidable had we had a solid foundation, but nevertheless, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose, right? Yes, so yes. I have to say, um, you know, I, I've, I've been hard-headed in my lifetime and, and did a lot of things on my own and have a multitude of testimonies. One in particular that stands out in my book, The Grace to Walk Away, because God's given me that, the grace to walk away from a lot of things. I didn't blow nothing up, right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't end up behind prison walls or, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't hurt anybody. I had the grace to walk away from some things. And one was, was a relationship when I was just madly, madly in love with this professional football player. And, and out of the blue, he asked me to marry him and we got married. And this was what I had hoped for, dreamed for, longed for, had been waiting for. And so we, uh, flew off to Las Vegas, even with my pastor, and we got married, and it wasn't 24, 48 hours later before he felt that he had made a mistake, and he wanted out, and I did not know that a heartache, a heartbreak was a real thing, and I experienced it at that time, and because of the decision I made, and there was, there's so much in the book that uh, chronicles events that happened along the way, and just the handprint of God, and I didn't understand it all at that time, but it took me some 20 years to understand why God did what he did, why he did not allow the relationship to be. And so what that instilled in me is that God is in the yes and he is in the no. And when he says no, we have to be grateful for it even if we don't understand it. And he may or may not choose to reveal why he said no, but when he does, it just gives you a greater level of gratitude. But truly and truly, my heart was absolutely broken. And it took three years to overcome that. And I'll tell you how, what God did. And it was really, really miraculous. I just happened to be riding uh, 
uh, taking this friend from point A to point B. And I was telling them, like, I've been in relationships. I've even been married, but I've never experienced anything like this. What is this? And uh, he said one line. He says, oh, you're not in love with him. You're in love with being in love. You're in love with being in love. And I tell you that very sentence, when he said that, it was like the bands around my heart just broke and I was free. And the heartbreak was immediately, miraculously gone. And so I thank God for that. It truly was a miracle. And I, I mean, I'm talking about praying and waiting and, 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 and believing God to, to deliver me from this. And he did it in an instant. Um, but I believed I needed to learn my lesson about being hasty, you know, about not uh, uh, being prayerful, but in everything by prayer and supplication, mm -hmm. letting your request be made known to God. And then mm -hmm. also recognizing the signs and the no's when he's telling you no. You know, oftentimes we can want what we want so badly that we will push past what God is trying to show us and tell us. Mm -hmm. So I did that. And I, I don't know if you want me, Otis, and I didn't on the show prior What's is that? to reveal what God did and how he shared with me why this wasn't what he had in store for me, what, what, what he was sparing me, actually, what he was, he was sparing me of tragedy, actually, he was really sparing me of tragedy um, because unfortunately, you know, the gentleman's life was revealed and God knows us all right he knows every yeah. hair on our yeah. heads he knew us before the foundation well he knows us right. and so he knew him God knew him better than I knew him and wanted to really spare me the heartache the heartbreak a bigger heartache heartbreak down the line but um I'll share it I'll share it the gentleman turned out to be um to commit multiple murders multiple murders and he's spending time in federal penitentiary and we of course pray for his soul and the, that the lord will um you know will bless him and will that he will get to know jesus as lord and savior because i know that you know he'll forgive us all for our sins if we ask but to to commit multiple heinous murders was what was revealed years down the line. And once that was revealed, all I could say was, thank you, Lord. You know, thank you for sparing me. Mm -hmm. um, thank you for sparing me. So yeah, we don't yeah. we don't know what God is trying to protect us from yes, oftentimes, yes. but I'm good with whatever he wants right now, Otis. <laughs> you know, I'm good with it. And I'm like, okay, Lord, you said no, no, it's cool with me because I know you know why. Right. Yeah. And see, somebody yeah. needs to hear that because just like yeah. with, 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 with Paul's story uh, and just like with yours, even though the stories are different, the, the key thing everyone will get is that God is always in the midst. He's always has his hands on us. It's just, do we, do we trust him? You had to trust him in the midst of a heartache, not knowing why. And then when it got revealed to you later, you was like, oh, oh, okay. I see, I, you know, I, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. And Absolutely. you know, you know, we all, you know how the old people, grandmama them used to say the old parents, they, they used to tell us just keep living by and by. Like the we'll longer we live, <laughs> we'll start right. understanding and that thing right. will get revealed to us. Just like with Paul, you know, going through what he was going through, you know, and sometimes you could easily say, why me? You know, you can either, why are you picking on me? But then for him to have the fortitude and say, oh, okay, I see, to hear God to say, oh, okay, you got a purpose. You got Ooh. something else and not to, you know, stay dealt in the report that they were given with him, the word cancer. And so everybody doesn't have that fortitude. Everybody doesn't have that, uh, Janelle, to 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 start listening to to God, so I wanted to have you guys on because I knew, especially with everything that was going from the pandemic to, like I said, what went on in Buffalo, that they need the people need to hear that hey, there's been some people who you don't think have gone through some things and come out on the other side, so they can say, 
man, if Jeanette went through it, if Paul went through it, man, I can, let me get myself up and let me go, let, let me come on the other side. And so I want to, um, Pastor uh, uh, Tim, if you could, you know, share your story, because you have one brother that I shake my head all the time, all, all the time, and I marvel at you all the time, even in, in the years that we've been knowing each other, the stuff you've been through, man, I, I still marvel um, at your story and the grace that God has given you and the power that you walk in. Well, as you know, I appreciate you from having me on because I'm just, I'm just Tim. We've been together for so long <laughs> and for you to bring me to this platform with these great people. I appreciate that mm -hmm. so much. And I appreciate, of course, I'm a full force fan. I still watch what's happening and <laughs> what's happening now. I'm, I'm a TV head. So, you know, we was, when I was in high school, I had a singing group and we were singing four or four songs. And so oh, for me to be here, really. Oh, yeah, I'm Brother just, Tim can blow now. They, they're brother, oh, brother, brother Tim, that, yeah. What? Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and so I appreciate you uh, being here and be, allowing me to be here. But then for Miss Jeanette, thank you for opening your your time by saying, I brought a lot of it on myself, so that way I don't have to go through all of that part of my life. <laughs> Trust, <laughs> okay? When you said that, I was like, oh, I'm glad she said that, because listen, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of my time with God is, okay, 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 I know I did this, my bad. I know I messed up. I need you to get me out of this, yes. you know? And, and oftentimes I don't even, Anyway, that's the whole nother thing. Thank you for saying that, Miss Jeanette. You're so, welcome. you know, it with one of the I have gone through. I mean, I'm I'm a young guy, but I've I've lived. I feel like I've lived so much life, you know, in um in a short amount of time. I'm 49. I'll be 50 this year, and um, about I want to say about 18 or 19 years ago, I buried my seven year old son, mm. and you know. Timmy was, he was my first, uh, his, his mom at the time, she and I, uh, when he passed away, we had divorced, but when Timmy was born, you know, right before Timmy was conceived, she had a miscarriage and that, you know, of course, miscarriage is devastating. And so then, uh, Timmy came along and he was a great baby. I mean, we just loved Timmy and bright personality. And so, um, she and I divorced and then, what happened was one day she called me to say, um, Timmy was a, a T-ball star. He was headed to actually the T-ball all-star team, headed to that by uh, coached by uh, a, a mutual friend of Otis and me. And so he, um, she said, Timmy's dragging his leg a little bit. We noticed that he's stumbling. So when we finally went to um, the doctor about it, they came back, long story short, to say, he had a brainstem glioma, which is a tumor in his brainstem. And of course that just knocked us off of our feet. And, um, you know, I had to, so we immediately, they was like, you know, we wanna, we're gonna put him in the hospital and we wanna start chemo immediately. And so I had to, I pulled the doctor outside of the room and I said to him, I need you to give it to me straight, please, sir. I said, what are our chances here? And he says, no child, especially an African-American child has ever survived this. So, you know, that was a major thing. I've been, I grew up in, um, I grew up in the church and I've been serving the Lord all my life. Now I ain't always lived like I was serving the Lord, but I've always been well acquainted with the hand of God on my life. And um, our family, my family is a ministry family. And so going through this, you know, taught me a lot of stuff. So we walked through this for 11 months with Timmy. And, um, you know, it was rough. It was rough to, to think. And yes, I was angry. Yes, I was angry. Not only I'm on the line. Not only uh, was I angry, I was confused. I, and, and so, you know, you asked the question, uh, you said, Otis, with the question, why me? I asked, why me? And the response I got from the Lord was, why not you? And I was like, oh. 
And so, you know, I started, you know, running my history down to God as if he didn't know who I was, right. as if you had forgotten me. I started running my history. And mm -hmm. I remember uh, serving one church as their worship leader. And I remember laying hands on a couple who could not bear children. And they went on to bear children through the power of God, but through me submitting to him, God used me that way. And I said, mm -hmm. Lord, how would you let that happen? Mm. And then you not, uh, you know, save my son. Yeah. And so what it taught me, it did teach me though, that my faith needs to be my faith in God because he is, not simply because of what he does. Many of us believe God as long as he's doing what we want him to do. And it's kind of like our, it's a, it's the, I think it's an epidemic now with, with young people and teenagers who have this, uh, I'm entitled, this entitlement thing. And oftentimes as Christians, we feel entitled, but even more so, I feel that people that have been serving God for a long time, we feel like because I, you know, have been serving you, you should come through for me. Right. And um, it was a, you know, it was a rough time. So we had chemo and radiation every day for six weeks, Monday through Friday, two different hospitals here in Atlanta. So we would go to one for chemo and drive across town to another for radiation. And it was really a lot. So, you know, we started seeing Timmy decline. The tumor was getting bigger. None of what they did worked. And so I'll never forget the Sunday that he passed away. Um, I got a text from his mom that says, I need you to call me. And so Timmy had just been with me Friday and Saturday. And so he, by that time he was on a feeding tube and we took him, took him uh, back to his mom. And she called me and said, Hey, I think it's time, but the Lord won't take him until you release him. That's what she said to me. And I was like, how, how could you say that to me? I'm in between services at a church, you know, it was eight o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock. And I was like, how, how do we manage this? But she said, I need you to release him. So on my way to start the next service, I said to the Lord, I am so angry right now, but all I know to do is serve you. And I will keep doing that. If this is what you deem to be the best thing for him, I trust you. And by the time I finished that second set of uh, that second service, he had passed away. So I was able to still, you know, go by where he was. And so what I've learned through all of that is that God will give you the grace to live with what you can't get over. And that is the thing now that as I eulogize family members and help mothers who are burying children, my best friend uh, many years later lost her son to um, uh, gun violence here in Atlanta. And I was able to say to her, hey, you walk with me through that. And what I learned is that God will give you the grace to live with what you can't get over. So through all of the tears and frustration, I would just go in the bathroom and sit and cry and tell God, I'm angry with you. How could you do this? I've but at the there. same time, I say to him, but I trust you with my life. Yeah, I trust you. And I promised him during that season of my life, I will never stop serving you. I will never turn my back on you. I'm rolling with you all the way because you have never stopped loving me. Yes. And I would not dare turn my back on you because of that. So it has been, and so his, his name was, uh, he was the second. I didn't, I didn't want a junior. So um, <laughs> he was the second, I was the first, he was the second. So even when I go to visit his grave now, that in and of itself is always uh, a shake because I'm looking at my name on a headstone. Oh, yes. And yeah, so, um, yes. but, but you know, the Lord is, he's faithful. And, and so, you know, I've also learned to live with the question mark. Like, mm. I don't know why. Right. And, you know, some people feel like, well, you know, God will tell you, and he knows why, and it's his, you know, it's always best. I don't know that, but what I choose to do is serve God with a question mark. I choose, so I've had two sons, you know, at that time when Timmy passed, I had two daughters and mm. I didn't think I would have any sons. And so oh. I'm like, Lord, how, how you going to not let me have sons too? And so um, I do have two sons now, oh, 16 dude. and uh, 14. Oh. And so, um, and, I, and I often say to all my kids, you guys are my sign that God loves me. And so I still trust the Lord and serve him because he does know. We don't always know. Yes. But, yes. He, does. but he does. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. Oof.
Go, uh, I don't yeah. to reconcile if I may, Brother well, Otis, yes. Pastor Tim, dear brother, my heart goes out to you. I my condolences, continue condolences. My, yeah, to my, you. Yeah. But but how do you say that you brought that on yourself? No, 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 I not that one. Not that no, one. No, not that one. No, not, not that, that one. one. I said, oh, right. Because you said that, because you said that, I didn't have to cover all of those parts. No, no. I mean, you know, no, I don't I don't think no, that. No, no, no. He wasn't talking about that for I, I I I can tell you that. I can tell you that. Yeah, I don't think that at all. Four. But I mean, you know, you don't know why, mm -hmm. but yeah. you just trust. And so, you know, yeah. some of the friends that he played with early in life. The things that they've gone on to do, one of the kids that Timmy was, uh, they played all the time, went on to do some big, uh, the high school musical too, and all of that. And so you can't help but wonder, I wonder what Timmy would be doing. Of course. You know, I wonder. And so that never goes away. And so as I talk to families, um, particularly who bury children, you know, I want to give them the permission to grieve, mm. give them permission to ask the, um, I wonder what because he still, you know, he lives. And so, of course, all of my children knows and we have jokes with Timmy would say so and so and so because I cannot, and for a minute, I was wondering if I was gonna ever be able to love children again and, mm -hmm. you know, have more. Right. And so you find out that you can, you do find out that there's love beyond that just because yeah. someone passes on doesn't mean they pass away. Yeah. That, you know, he still, we still make jokes and Timmy would say this and Timmy would, would do this and you know he's a part still a part of our memory and and, and quite honestly um in my heart daily when i look at yes. all of my kids i yes. miss him so sometimes i would put take a picture and say here's my five minus one you know mm -hmm. that kind of thing or my four minus yeah. one and so he's just always there and i do i i do understand the the place that you grow to that is no longer painful although you still have the question but it's no longer pain per se, but I'll never get over burying my son. And at the time when he passed away, he was on steroids and he had always been a little guy, but those steroids had pumped him up. Right. And he looked just like me. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> and so to see he was looking just like me in that, in that wow. he was chunky and, and curly yeah. hair. And when I had hair, of course. And so, um, yeah, but the Lord has kept me and sustained my life. And my trust in God and my faith has gone to another level because I understand now that I gotta, I gotta love God simply because he is. Yes. Not, not because he answers every prayer. Not because he, you know, he right. knows best, but he doesn't answer every prayer. Yes, yes, yes. And to me, I can never be a real the theologian without having some questions. Yes, yes. And faith, uh. Faith cannot be faith if you have the answers to everything. Yeah, that's yes. true. That yes. man, that's well, y'all done gave some nuggets, but Ooh, I got yeah. Before before you go, Ernest, um, I'm just gonna give a uh because I, I told myself, I said I can't ask all these people to put themselves out there and not put myself out there. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I never I so so from you to Paul to Janet to Tim. You guys have inspired me so much and others. I, 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 I did this podcast and I, I called it Interruptions because I was like, well, LeBron James has a podcast called Uninterrupted. I'm going to name my Interruptions. And I was just trying to be cute. And little did I know that God was actually going to interrupt. Mm -hmm. And so when... I interviewed someone like Paul and I'm, you know, I'm just trying to see who he is as a man and the whole, you know, full force and all the stuff, the accomplishment he's done. And then he gets into telling me about his situation with cancer. And then I, I tried to do the same thing with Ernest and talk about, you know, knowing the man behind the acting and, and then he begins to tell me his story. I ain't going to put it out because he's going to say it in a minute. And God showed me through all of you guys that he said your whole life you have been inconvenienced, but you haven't had tragedy. Now, yes, my mother passed in 2017 unexpectedly. My father passed first in 1996. 
uh, and and then two weeks later, I found that I was going to be a father. Uh, after my mom passed, uh, I was fighting depression, trying to make sure I didn't get depressed. So mm -hmm. uh, just like Tim, I was mad at God. And I fooled around one day and interviewed a guy by the name of Bishop Cortez Vaughn. And through that interview, he took the weight of the depression off of me mm. because I heard God saying to me, have you ever been raped? I was like, no. Have you ever went through what Jeanette went through? No. Have you, have you went through what Tim went through? No. Have you went through what Paul went through? No. Have you went through what Ernest went through? No, God says everybody lose somebody eventually if you live long enough. You've just been inconvenienced your whole life. But tragedy hasn't stricken you. And the reason you believe it's tragedy is because you forgot to keep magnifying me. And you made your problems and your situations bigger. So when, when I did that, that's the depression. Mm. That is... Trust me, I had the conversation with God. Like, I know you can bring my mother back. I know you can. You ain't going to tell me you can bring Lazarus from the dead. You're not going to mm -hmm. tell me right. you can bring Jesus Christ back in three days. You can bring my mother back. No, and it was only to Bishop Cortez Vaughn told me, he said, it's not that you want your mother back as far as in the flesh. It's what she gave you. It's what you want back. Because... When we lose someone, the thing that they gave us is what we're missing. And then we begin to panic. We begin mm -hmm. to have anxiety. And it was yeah. only through the podcast, hearing that from some, I'm interviewing him about his music in his church. And he's blessing me. And it's the same yeah. thing that you guys have done. And that's why I wanted to put something like this out because it's therapeutic for me, but everybody doesn't have a platform that I have to get what you guys have given me, you know, all these years. So I just wanted to put that out, you know, uh, myself and be vulnerable uh, because I always ask guests to come on and, you know, they're vulnerable, but yeah, I fought, I fought depression uh, for, for two years, my wife told me, you need to go see somebody. And you know, you know how it is in our culture. Go see somebody. Um, I ain't crazy. What you talking about? <laughs> I ain't crazy. And I sat up in my house crying and no one knew I was crying. And that's a that's a that's a real that's a real thing. So I had to learn now to be open to call my friends, whether it be Pastor Tim or my other uh, pastor. Look, I'm always around minister. I got another mm -hmm. best friend, Pastor Lavaris yeah. Holloway. So yeah. to open up and yeah. and if I'm hurting, say I'm hurting. Yeah. And uh, and yeah. and then what I've learned before I let you go, Ernest. What I've learned it was something that Paul said, which was far as purpose so the way i get stuff off of me if i'm dealing with a lot of stuff is i go check on other people mm -hmm. that way i don't make it about me anymore mm -hmm. and somebody else is going through something and by the time i come back to my own situation he's already fixed it <laughs> yes 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 i hear you i hear you Yes, yes. So, Mr. Yes. Ernest, if you could yes. share your story um, with us, and then that would that would be that that would be the one to take us out. Well, but first of all, thank you all for it, man. The the, the, the overcoming those stories, man. I, I tell you, uh, and you mentioned depression just real quick. That I that was something I recently dealt with, having had a head-on collision, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's nothing. I I don't see how people. I said, Lord Jesus. Now wait a minute. Now <laughs> you got. I'm a happy person. What's going on here? Yeah. I'm feeling like you can take me out. I'm like, Lord, if this is going to continue like this, mm -hmm. and the doctor told me to go to therapy and all that, but I'm saying I never thought I would say, well, you know, it'd be okay to go because physical pain would be, was better would be better than depression. Wow. You know, and I'm always giving these positive posts and the and the verses from the Bible and all that. And it's like, well, then your ego, you know, said so I and then I admit it. I put on, on I had to post that look, y'all, going through something, never had thought I would, depression. 
I don't wish it on my worst enemy because I didn't want to, you know, make you not want to be here, you know. But I thank God I didn't want to commit suicide. But I said, Lord, if you know, if I'm gonna be with you, <laughs> I'm ready to go because this is too much, man. That depression is no joke. And I said, you brothers out there, Latinos and blacks, it's selfish of you to go. You don't want to get help. You think it's a weakness, but you leave your your mother without a son and father without a son. You leave your children without a father, you know? So it's a selfish act, you know? And um, just go get the help for them, you know? Right. Get out of yourself. But anyway, back, my, my story is overcoming, you know, the free base and uh, cognac and the weed and really bad on the free base. Um, and, uh, you know, coming from Kojic, thank God, I think that being inside of me as a little boy, my pastor, Elder Chandler, God bless him. He used to get on my nerves. And what I put inside of Ernest, no man can take away. I said, why does he keep saying that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> he getting on my nerves. Right? But yeah, I get what he was saying. Because he, he would come and get me. My folks are Baptists, right? He'd come and get me. Uh, but my mother then was, oh, you holy rollers, you know. <laughs> You know, go ahead with your little holy rollers. But my social work was was Pentecostal, and that's how I, you know, started at 12 years old. And thank God. So when I decided to play hooky from God, you mm -hmm. know, and that's what happened. And I tell the young people, don't ever play hooky from God. I said, Lord, I am bored. Thank you for the TV show. Uh, yes, I never thought I have this fame and meeting people like Muhammad Ali, Dr. Angelou, Oprah Winfrey, and they loving me and all that. However, <laughs> I am bored. Everybody having fun with this cocaine and this weed and liquor and the parties, you know? And, uh, and I tried to fight it. You know, I, I said, well, I'm gonna do it, but I won't do the cocaine. And God brought this, the drug dealer's girlfriend looked like a Debbie Allen with jet black hair short like that, and she had burgundy lipstick on. Mm -hmm. I never forget. And I'm there at the drug dealer's house. Everybody's mm -hmm. doing it. I said, no, uh -uh, I'll do the weed, no coke. His wife came and sat in front of me and looked dead in my eyes. And she says, Negro, <laughs> you gonna do it for me? And next thing I know, I was off to the races, you know? Wow. And uh, mm. and that was it, brother. You know, you know, you, you from looking on the floor, trying to find the crumbs and all that stuff. You know, uh, actually getting hot at the drug dealer's house because I knew I had the fame. I could get more drugs. You know, the show was on twice a day, right? So I make sure I go to the drug dealer's house around the time what's happening was on. <laughs> and it was, and the main one was uh, Richard Pryor's girl. All right, Richard Pryor's drug deal, that girl had the pure, I mean, her cocaine was like almost just pure, ridiculous, right? And but I knew she had a crush on me, so I had to make sure I wore the tight jeans. I wore the tight jeans. I made sure the show was on, I go with my tight jeans on. And, oh, she'd be pouring that coke out. She'd be pouring that coke out. You know, but, oh, but it caught up with him. Brother, brother, I tell you. I got to the point that I was in the hotels and uh, people were getting paranoid around me. So I said, okay, I'm going to be real smart. I'm going to do my free base in a hotel by myself, right? <laughs> now, you know you could OD right there. So just looking at God, you know, I don't know how, again, God's grace and mercy. He had no reason to keep me, right? Because here I am deliberately going in harm's way. In the, in the hotel... Then you get in fear, are they smelling it? Are the police gonna you know, break down the door at any time? You're hearing the helicopters, all right? Because one, you you high, you feel ecstasy, all right? Mm -hmm. You feel like ecstasy, like you have not pleasure times of 10,000 to the ninth power. But when you come down, every negative feeling you ever had from the time you were a little kid on the, it, it comes to the surface. Now you got to go to sleep. Now you got to take the sleeping pills. And as you take the sleeping pills, you wonder if you'll wake up and you're crying because you know you're because that church is in you. 
So you, you wonder if you even work all that stress and worry, right? That I, and, but I did wake up and then finally it got so bad, you know, in New York City, uh, to, to give you the Reader's Digest version of it, where um, the, the, between the alcohol, which is very strong, between vodka, cognac, and then the, you got the cocaine, you got the weed, and then I was trying to do stand-up comedy. They, they had me doing it, and I could do 10, 15 minutes. They said, oh, no, you're a celebrity. You got to do an hour. So I'm on my way to, to the village to do an hour's comedy, but I know the material is not that strong, and I don't want to do it. I'm not, I didn't like stand-up, but, I, you know, they love me doing the 10, 15 minutes. Anyway, by the time I got there, man, I have been drinking so much liquor because you can drink at a brown paper bag in New York, right? And by the time I got there, brother, it was not, it, it was it, the, the, the lights in New York and the stars were just dancing, right? I was so drunk and I uh, had to ask someone, please take, you know, sir, could you show me how to get back to 888 8th Avenue? That was the address. And uh, I got back there and I got on my knees and prayed. I said, Lord, I said, Lord, I can't even help you. Even as I pray to you now, Lord, I want to do the drugs. As I pray, you're going to have to take the desire away from me because as I pray to you right now, I want to do it again. And God did something I never thought. Yeah, we say we believe in God, but, you know, we really don't believe that God can do all things. You know, when he does it, we like, oh, he did it. But I did not because I had failed it. So you go a year, then you fail. You go two years and you back on it again. But 32 years later, right? 32, when God, he took that desire. He did exactly. Jesus came and got the lost sheep, got the prodigal son. And, and, uh, and every day I'm wondering, okay, this is a year now. Maybe it's gonna now or two years is gone. Well, people got it around me. Am I gonna be am I gonna be tempted? Nothing. Nothing, you know? So I know I said, I don't know. I can't argue with people about is God real? Is Jesus? I know for a fact I have experienced the, the, the divine and then deserve it. But God's grace, right? It's God's grace. And so I, I'm here and I, t I tell the young people again, do not play hooky from God. Don't play hooky from God because you might not make it back, you know, but I had to humble myself and got on my knees and thank God the roommates weren't there in New York when I was there. No, it was just me in that little, little apartment in New York. And uh, 32 years later, I still pinch myself. I still find it how do you love something like me? You know, how do you still, in spite of all that I've done, I ignored you, you you're like you weren't even there. Yeah, I acknowledge you, but I'm just still going in harm. I'm sitting with the drug dealer with, he got all the heroines and different grades of heroines and, and the coke and all, the, I'm sitting right there. Never went to jail. I, had, I could have gone to jail many, many times. All the police had to do is come on in, you know? So just that's by the grace of Christ, mm. the supernatural power of Jesus Christ, yes. you know, I said, so nobody, I don't need nobody's, I don't need one's opinion. It was a few people because I was Muslim at one time too. And so it was a few Christians like, yeah, brother, I'm just, yeah, I just wonder if you, if you sincere, I said, brother, I don't, I don't need to, put, you don't have a heaven or heaven to put, to put me in. I've talked to Christ directly. I don't care. I don't need bishop this and prophet that. I don't need no one's opinion. I said, oh, I, I, stop right there. You're out of order. Okay. I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I don't need my mama's permission because when you went to hell and back and shook the devil's hand and Christ comes and picked you up, I can't, no one tell you nothing. Oh, yeah, so, and like you said, the best thing when you do have, when you go and serve others, you yeah. know, the, the serving others. Yeah. And uh, a friend of mine just lost, her son just died, you know, a big accident. Another friend, his mother, his daughter got killed, you know, and, and then, uh, then his mother died, you know. Uh, then another girl telling about her father molesting her all the uh, So you, I, you're serving, 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 serving. And I feel I get a high. Sure. I really do. I get a high. And now taking care of my mother at 91, 
you know, uh, which is quite challenging because the dementia is setting in sure. and uh, you see her disintegrating before your very eyes. And so you, you cry when, she, you know, when she can't see you and you got to go in there and smile and make jokes and all that. So all of that, I said, well, Lord, thank you that I didn't know I had the capacity to take care of my mother while I have to bathe her and take, I mean, you know, just because she did not want that, but she cried like a baby. Yes, I have women that come in, uh, we have hospice, but at times at night when she's done the bowel movements, I can't let her sit in that stuff. I said, mom, I gotta do, I have to do this. And she cried like a baby and I told her, I said, mom, look at me, I was born this way. I was born to serve. I didn't know I had this capacity. I could do the next door neighbor, you know, I didn't know. I'm so glad that I know now the saint, the elderly people who are neglected. If, if I'm able to, I would clean them all up. If I'm able to do it, if I had the a time to do it, I could do it. As long as they're not violent trying to hurt me, you know, I, I would do it because I, I can't, you know, I don't want to be hurt, but if, so, right. if they are open to, I would do it. But I didn't know that. You know, and you, I get such a high after taking care of my mother with her bowel movements, and she's now she can joke about it. She cried at first, but who knew? Yeah. And now I know that that's what I have to do is to take care of the elderly and asking God, you know, for ways, you know, uh, cutting edge technology to make their lives better, where they have their dignity. You know, and, and especially because a lot of the kids, their children are abandoning the, the elderly, yeah. they, you know, so and I found that out through the hospitals and, and the rehabilitation places and the senior, senior homes. They were telling me, oh, no, brother, you know, it, it's a shame. They leave them here to die. So I just thank Lord Jesus, brother, my best friend in the world. That's all I know. With all my faults, I tell people, oh, no, now. You know, a friend called me a Bible thumper. I said, no, but I never told you I'm per perfect. I put a verse, I, I tell you, I cuss a little bit. I tell you, you push, you, you hit the wrong button. <laughs> okay, okay. You hit the wrong button, I'm just telling you, okay? You might get it, you might get it. Uh, but, but still owned and operated by Jesus Christ, okay? You, oh, yes, you. but I don't know. You can't tell me I'm not. Yo, we God knows me, I talk, we talk about everything, everything. He got me, you know? So I'm so glad it took me a long time at 73. I finally, well, I wish I knew this at 20, but it's here. I just thank God that I know the supernatural Jesus Christ. See, I, I, see, I appreciate that, you know, Ernest, because people, through, 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 through this podcast, I've been able to see that people know God and you would think from people from the outside would yes, think yes. that you don't know, you know, a person yes, of your yes. stature, a person yes. of Paul's stature, yes, you know, yes. people will assume yes, that brother. you guys have never encountered Jesus, never, yes. never talked yes. to him. And for, yes. and for you guys to be able to share that story and, yes. you know, like I, I, Ernest, I was telling Paul before you came on, I said, him, my cousin, Greg, I get jealous at the time, man, they living their best life, man. I see Paul on, on uh, uh, Instagram and I was like, man, he should have called me. I should have made that trip, <laughs> like, you know, and then I see you, Ernest, but, I, uh, but, 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 you know, the cool, let me tell you the cool thing, uh, the cool thing, Tim, the cool thing, Janet, is that when I send Paul just stuff that I'm doing, like the interviews or whatever on Instagram, I go back and look, I see he's seen it. And it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing that he's not he's not looking at like, man, why is he sending this to me? Why is he saying, sure. you know, yeah. I just he's seen it. And I appreciate yes, yes, that. Yes. And the first time I interviewed him, he told me, he said, man, anything I could do to come on to help black businesses, black people. You got a podcast. And here's the beautiful Paul. Paul, Paul I was just getting started. I was mm. just getting started, mm. man. You, you and and um, Bill Dukes at that time were the two biggest celebrities I had interviewed, and I hadn't even been in in a year. Mm. And so we're coming wow. back two years later, you know, a year and a half, two years later, and the different people, and God has blessed me to bring all you guys 
Uh, yeah, I'm still you know, trying to figure get... out why I'm here. I don't even know why I'm here. I mean, <laughs> oh no, you you there? You super? Oh no, brother! Oh man of God, I know why you're there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The man I know God. why you're here. Yeah. I well, know I said, why you're I have, here. I, I have him here because one of the things I always like. You guys heard his story, and people don't think even pastors go through things. People sometimes may look at him as, as a pastor and think yeah. he was born a pastor. Now he wasn't born yeah, a pastor. Yeah. Now, like he right. said, we yeah, all yeah. we all have messed up. And right. you know, yeah. Je yeah. Jeanette, your story and your book, she blessed yeah. me, Tim. She mailed me uh, her book, and a lot of times people would tell you that, yeah, yeah I get you a book, I get you a book. Mm -hmm. I looked up. Dude, this thing was at my at my house. I was like, I didn't even know what it was. I was like, what is this? And when I opened it up, I'm like, oh, she sent me the book. Wow. Then she sent me a t-shirt. Now, 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 Tim, you you know I, I I ain't wore extra large in a minute. So I looked at the wife. I said, hey, baby, you got your t-shirt. Right. And she's worn it the last two days. You know, we coming down. We coming down. I've lost. I've lost close to 30 pounds, so we coming down, but okay. I just can't wear extra large right now. <laughs> but, but, but you bless me with that. And then for Ernest, um, uh, Tim, to, to we had a, a, a mutual, uh, well, it was, uh, Janet, it was Pam. It was Pam. Pam said, I hooked you up with Ernest. That's right. That's right. I ended up calling his sister. I said, I want to interview him. This is the direction I want to go. He comes to the phone. He says, call me on this line. So now he gives me his number. Wow. I'm like, and I'm sitting back to him like, man, I got Rod's number. <laughs> right, <You know>? right. <laughs> <got> Rod's number. <laughs> and, right. And, and to he and I, it took me, Paul, it took me an hour and a half to interview Ernest because of what he said he does. He said, hold on, man. I'm, I'm tending to my mother. I have the nurses here. I just hit pause. He goes, he comes back. We pick up, he had to leave again. I paused it again mm -hmm. and I came back. And the reason I salute him is because before my mom died, my wife and I had spent eight to 10 years trying to get my mom to move in with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she was still holding on to, you know, her mm -hmm. uh, independence. And so mm -hmm. when I see someone that can do that and take the time to do that, it does something for me. So mm -hmm. all you have have blessed me in ways you cannot imagine and always been shining a light you've all inspired me and the people that will see this are going to get inspired and you just never know who lives you guys uh encourage and bless and, and you know the great part about it you guys are not doing anything different but just being yourselves. And that's the blessed part about it. You're not doing no extra than just being yourself. So I appreciate you guys coming on the show, blessing us with your presence, giving us your stories. And I'll be putting this out actually after um, Memorial Day. Uh, I got to take some time out, have some fun with the family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Otis, I want to say thanks again for having me on, but to Janet mm -hmm. and Paul and Ernest, I appreciate your humbleness. I appreciate the grace that I see on you. I appreciate that so much. And for all that you guys have done mm -hmm. and all the years that I've watched you and, and, and all of that, just the fact that you are here today with the humble hearts and grace, man, y'all have blessed me so much. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much you. for thank being you. who you are, Janet. Thank yes. you. It's a pleasure meeting you today. It's my pleasure to be here. Yes, yes. Likewise. And I, I want to say that. I want to say mm -hmm. the same thing. I, I, I appreciate the, the transparency I can see through you because I have been on those uh, Zoom where there are people that you know were just fake lying. They're just straight up lying, you know. Uh, yeah, they were testifying by God and all that, but there was so much stuff in the way, right? Yeah. And you can't call them out on it because that's embarrassing too, right? Mm -hmm. And I, who am I? You know, I, I have been, I was freebasing in a hotel. I got I judge them. But I'm just saying, I think you shouldn't get on faking it with God, though. Sure. You know, I just yeah. think that's just... Uh, Anyway, so I just appreciate you, Pastor Tim. You know, I can't even imagine, you know, 
uh, I, I, losing a child. You know, I, I've never had a child. I have a, a girl, a little young lady who adopted me as her father. But to see you, your light, to see you right now with the light of God on your face still and that, yeah, I had these, I was angry and all that. That's beautiful. People need to hear that testimony. So many people have lost children. Yes, sir. So many, man. Yes, so sir. no, brother, you are, trust me, you a superstar. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> you are a superstar, you know, and the, and, and the anointed, and, yeah, anointed, you know, so you, yes, my yes. brother. I appreciate yes. that. Yes, the feelings, absolutely um, mutual, absolutely mutual, Pastor Tim. Um, I, I do honor God for you and uh, your testimony <clears throat> is absolutely um, heart wrenching and heartwarming to see mm. how God has brought you through it and how He is mm -hmm. blessing you to be a blessing to those who are going through it. Um, yeah. I work, sir, in the uh, death care industry and I see a lot every day and I hear a lot every day. And my heart goes out to people who have lost loved ones, particularly when they didn't get the opportunity to live a full life yes. Um, yes. as we expect. Yes. And then certainly parents having to lay their children to rest is, is even a greater um, heartbreak. But um, I honor God for, for you and for the outlook that you have and the blessing that you are to people who are going through that. Thank you. Um, thank you thank for sharing your testimony. You. Yeah. Paul, you're amazing. You're wonderful. And just your positive yes. outlook right from the beginning, your yes. tenacity to know that, yes. hey, I got this. God's got yes. this. I'm going to do yes. this. It's yes. certainly an inspiration. And Ernest, you know how much I love you, okay? You know I how you much most. I love you. You have been a blessing to my life for years. Uh, and you um, will always, always, always be my favorite always, brother. Always. You know, I thank God for you. Yes. Any, any, uh, any final uh, words, Paul? You got any final words? I mean, you know, once again, you know, as the good book says, when two or more gathered there in the midst stands, he, mm -hmm. so I love when we can, I uh, have this fellowship and the sisterhood and the exchange energy because energy is real. Often when I do speaking engagements, I try to remind people that God is spirit, God is woman, God is man, and you know, uh, never miss out an opportunity to exchange the love. This is like nourishment. This is like mm -hmm. this is better than chemo, you know, better than everything. And yeah, we, uh, we, we seem to get that lost in the equation. So it's, it's our sovereign duty to make sure that we, who has been through certain challenges, mm -hmm. make sure that we put it out there, whether it comes yeah. back is, whether it comes back is secondary, what's primary is that we put it out there and send yes, it out yes. there into the atmosphere. It's gonna find us where God wants us to go. Mm -hmm. Just put it out, just keep putting it out. Yeah. That's what I do, you yes. know? That's yes. the only, that's the, cause I mean, you gotta remember, I tell people, uh, you know, don't be afraid to, when I talk to him, I talk very confidently. I talk sometimes truculently to him because as I told you, we're in a first name initial basis. And sometimes you got to remind him of the promises you made yeah. to one another. And I tell him, I said, gee, look, I'm on the case. No, <laughs> don't worry. I'm on it. But don't you forget, I know you are busy. I said, I know you're busy. There's, there's a lot of clowns running around out here. So I know you're busy, but look here. I got the tools, I'm doing it, but don't you forget, G. Okay, okay, yeah. cool. You good? <laughs> oh, cool, peace. You know, because he's got a good sense of humor. You see all these yes. clowns around. Yes. Right. Yeah. We're, yeah, we're all right. your children at the end of the day. So sometimes yeah. he, when you speak that way and, yeah. you know, remind yeah. him of that, and I try to tell people, don't wait to go to church to talk to him. You just, just yeah. anyway, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, 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 let's use that. But yeah. once again, I want to thank all of you for the exchange, for the like I said, for the fellowship and the sisterhood, I love it like that, yeah. you know, and um, Ernest, you already know what is understood that we know where it's needed. You're my oh, brother. And, no you know, no and, and, yeah. and, and, and always remember, Paul Anthony loves the mom. So I'm a mama's boy. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. You parked it right there, baby. Don't get it twisted. Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful all mom. Love, and all and I, want, I just want one thing. You and some of God have a sense of humor, right? So, yes, uh, so I was offered pornography, right? They said, oh, what are we big uh, rides for next door? You know, you get so much money, right? They offer me all this money, right? And mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out, okay, Lord, okay, if I put a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> 
They will never know another name, you know. <laughs> then I just say, oh, or Lord, I just didn't know. I got weak, you know. <laughs> <laughs> You were my mama day, needed right? a big house. I right. needed to get a big house for my mom. God, you love mothers, right? Right. Can't, can't okay, we work this thing out? Uh, can't we work it out? <laughs> oh my god! Oh my. That's funny. Oh my god. That's funny. That's funny. I'm trying to justify it. I was trying to do it, but that's, uh, no, that's, that wasn't happening. That just I hear happen. you. I hear you. I hear you, man. I hear you. But that's that was funny. offered. No, I'm serious. That was yeah. They yeah. They tried. That's no, no. I'm crazy. talking about the no. I'm talking about the phone. Like you said, trying to justify it. Like uh, right, right, right. Because right. we do we do that we do that with God sometimes. Like look, <laughs> hey, look, you know. I'm about to do this, but you will forgive me, right? All right. Well, let me go. That's, <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh, oh my I God. I appreciate oh the God. smiles on y'all faces. And once again, you guys yeah. continue to stay safe and stay blessed out there and continue to be doing what you've been doing, man. And we love you. All love. All love blessings. You too, All, All right. Thank you.